Hello and welcome. The political atmosphere in Ondo State is busy, no doubt, especially in the camp of the opposition, the All Progressives Congress. But what may be a subject of debate is whether the Ondo APC is united in activity. It's just about three months to the governorship election in that state and the political horse trading has begun while discordant tunes are emerging from Ondo State, all in the ultimate bid to unseat the ruling People's Democratic Party government in that state. Will this be a reality? Ondo State again is our focus on fireworks today. As I bid you welcome, let's take a short break. We'll be right back. Thank you for staying tuned to Fireworks. Today I have with me a governorship aspirant in Ondo State and popular constitutional lawyer, uh, Dr. Tunji Abayomi. Thank you for your time, sir. Thank you. Yeah, nice to have you on Fireworks. Well, it's my pleasure. You're again in the fray to be governor of Ondo State. You're an aspirant. What um, informs your regular participation in um, Ondo politics at the governorship level? Well, it's actually an extension of my, you might say, life commitment to find solution to human problem. As you are well aware, as a human rights activist, I had struggled in the past furiously in order to achieve a number of ends. One of those ends is the struggle for freedom because then I believed man functions best in a state of freedom. I was one of the uh, leaders on the human rights community that confronted the military in order to bring the military down to recognize and accredit democracy for the nation. But now we have democracy. The end we sought was for the happiness of the people for their well-being, for their enhancement, and their uh, goodness, so to say. But we haven't really achieved that. And so since we made the sacrifice in the past, it is, in my view, still appropriate, since I still have energy in me, to try to do the best that I can, if the people accept that as uh, an aspirant. Uh, for the governorship of Ondo State. Now, what makes you think again that your party will look your way amidst this um, um, capital N-O, no stands to zoning, which it declared recently, and of course, um, its directive to um, aspirants from Akoko to pick a consensus candidate. So why would the APC look your way? Well, I expect that they will, but again, life itself is an experiment. They may, they may not. If they do, then I will do the best that I can. And if they, they do not, I will still do the best that I can within my capacity as a lawyer, as a human rights activist, and as a humanist. Now, in terms of um, zoning, we ask, there is no word zoning in the constitution of Nigeria, but we have federal character, which is another definition of zoning. So Must you support zoning? Yes. In this case, because it suits you? No, not because really. you are from the north, you are from Ondo North, right? Well, I am from the Ondo North. So, so, so you support zoning? No, I don't support zoning because I'm from the Ondo North. I support zoning because it's constitutionalized in federal character. I support zoning because it's legalized. It's in convenient the, in for the, you to yes. explain it a way that it is supported constitutionally. Yes. But has Nigeria absolutely um, practiced zoning? Of course. Absolutely. In fact, prove every, it to me. Prove it to me, Dr. Abayami, that well, Nigeria has absolutely support practice zoning in its politicking. I put it to you, Dr. Abayam, that Nigeria only deploys zoning or the principle of the federal character when it suits her. 
Well, yes, every time suits Nigeria. So it suits in you in this of, case to uh, deploy all the reasoning that supports zoning? No, once you have a, a concept enshrined or inputted in the law, it becomes a fundamental principle of state. Now, in the case of Nigeria, federal character, which is another concept of zoning, is not just recognized in our minds, but it is constitutionalized. And it is constitutionalized because it is recognized in our mind as a principle for equity in political office sharing. Right now, for example, there are lots of people that are complaining that the president or the government is taking everybody from the north. Now, if we look at it strictly from the concept of citizenship, there's no basis for that because they are all Nigerian citizens. But there's a lot of talk. You cannot disregard the fact that this nation is placed on some basic pivots. Ethnicity is one of them. Region is one of them. All of them. Well, the same Nigerians you talk about are also complaining that some people in this country from a particular ethnic group have uh, ascribed the rulership of this country to be their uh, own exclusive preserve. Yes. So if a uh, federal character were truly practiced, shouldn't the presidency of this country uh, be uh, 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 rotated around all the 250 ethnic groups in the country? No, it's not. But it has gone through much of Nigerian history to the north. No, but so zone. does Nigeria practice zoning no, the, or the principle of the federal character yeah, but the, in absolute terms? The constitution does not anticipate practice in absolute time. It's oh. talking of sections. Okay. Sections. And when you look at Nigeria, like I said I mean, to some of your colleagues, Nigeria is unique. The ethnic groups are specifically and strategically placed in different areas. The Yorubas in southwest, Ibos in southeast, in the south-south you have the Jaws and, and so on and so forth. Middle Belt you have the Plateau Teeth and so on and so forth. So if you see the character divinely, the point is this, it's important in Nigeria to recognize and appreciate that we may have to go through what I would call two stages of national integration. The first stage will be determined by the nature of the order of the peoples of Nigeria. Like I said, you have different ethnic groups strategically placed. So in terms of Nigeria, you have peoples of Nigeria. Now these different ethnic groups have different excellences, interests, and different issues that conjure their emotion. But they all have equal rights. Now, within those ethnic groups, there are citizens. So what I'm in essence saying is that at this stage, we may have to appreciate that zoning, geopolitical spread, rotation, is still a necessity before we get to a point of building a national citizen. The All Progressives Congress has dropped zoning, why has it said all Akoko aspirants should pick a consensus candidate? Isn't it like speaking from both ends of the mouth? Well, I... If all 50 aspirants will be screened, have a, a level playing field for consideration at the primary level, why ask Akoko aspirants to I pick a think, consensus I candidate? Don't think, I don't think APC as a party has spoken uh, affirmatively or directly to our Koko people to pick a candidate or ha, uh, no, has a piece of it into the people of our Koko. But there the is a statement of in the news which is jointly signed by you and some other Akoko aspirants yes. saying that uh, what APC has done or has said is unconstitutional. Well, so is it a fluke? Well, what APC, the position we're making in Akoko, it must be appreciated is that we are of the view that I mean, it's a contest. We are of the view that in order to increase the possibility of our winnability, then the best thing is to find a way to have a consensus candidate. Akoko has over 700 uh, delegates, and we are the only group of people in the entire Nigeria that, that, that has 
four local governments of a people. Therefore, if we have four local governments, if we are wise in our affairs, if we are wise in our affairs, then we should take advantage of that kind of situation. That means that if we want to be a governor in Ondo State, if we manage our affairs well, you must de 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 defer to us. What if we even want to be president are you in Nigeria, saying, you must defer to us. Acknowledged. What are, what, what are you saying in clear terms that the APC never said a cocoa aspirant should come up with a consensus aspirant? Is the APC aspirant from Akoko and the Akoko people that said in order to enhance and increase their winnability. But the APC indeed asked them. you, Akoko aspirants, to bring a consensus candidate, a consensus aspirant. If, if APC, APC... Are you trying to be careful because no, of the cameras? Be <laughs> you don't want to, to say careful. anything against <laughs> your party. No, that's not the point. I'm telling you the facts. APC will communicate officially with us, but the point I'm making is that even if APC So there was no that, elders forum which occurred in April in the home of one of the elders asking Akoko aspirants to come up with a consensus There aspirant. have been several meetings of Akoko elders working towards a consensus candidate. And that is in order to help the party to win because if you win in four local governments a cocoa four local government you are already on your way to victory so the statement in which you uh senator jay borofis yeah. one other chieftain uh yes. dada yes. and uh the dr victor olabimton the statement you jointly signed yeah. declaring that position unconstitutional is not uh, real. No, what we are saying there, you must appreciate it. Our position because there, there must be an action for there to be a reaction. Yes, our position then, our action then. So what were you reacting to? We were reacting to the division. We are saying that our cocoa is not north or south. Our cocoa is one. I ask again, what was your statement reacting to? We were reacting to a division in our cocoa the Akoko North, I'm from Akoko North, North uh, Federal Constituency. We were reacting, and I'm part of the people. So you were not reacting, reacting to, we were reacting to, to that division. You were not to reacting to a resolution from an elders forum asking Akoko to pick a consensus. There was nothing like that. Oh, no, we agree with that. That's not the problem. We agree with that. Not agree with what? To pick a consensus, to work towards one single kind of consensus candidate. We agree with that. We have no problem with that because it enhances the capacity of a cocoa to win. We don't have a problem with that. What we have a problem with, what we are saying, however, is that in order to enhance winnability in a cocoa, its capacity to win, a cocoa for local governments must work as one. You're watching Fireworks. I have been talking with uh, Dr. Tunji Abayomi, a constitutional lawyer, and governorship aspirant in Ondo State. When we come back, we will return to the story on the APC Elders Forum and a consensus candidate, or if you like, aspirant from a Koko uh, constituency in Ondo State. Stay with Fireworks, we'll be right back. Thank you for staying with Fireworks. I have been talking with a governorship aspirant in Ondo State and constitutional lawyer, Dr. Tunji Abayomi. And in the last half hour, we have been looking at the issues forming the November governorship election, particularly uh, zoning, federal character, and of course, uh, the decision uh, of the All Progressives Congress to drop zoning in its bid to picking its flag bearer for this crucial election. Now, Dr. Abayomi, I will, as a matter of necessity, return to the story of the um, All Progressives Congress Elders, Akoko Elders Assembly in Ondo State. Now, this story, as it reads, says it was gathered that the elders under the auspices of Akoko Elders Assembly were making an arrangement for all the APC governorship aspirants to produce a consensus candidate in Akoko in order to enable an Akoko indigene win the party primary. At that meeting, we understand one of the candidates said he had been picked at that meeting. One of the candidates, and it's all in the social media that the Akoko elders had picked a candidate 
And our position is that no, our cocoa elders cannot pick a candidate. There are only two ways by which a candidate can emerge, a consensus candidate, either by agreement among the various aspirants that, look, we are surrendering a contest to somebody, or by way of voting. That's the point we're making. That's it. In terms of consensus candidate, yeah, but there is do. no smoke yeah. without fire. Why would a candidate uh, come up to say that he had been picked if it's not uh, obvious, uh, if it's not a democratic process where everyone was present, well represented, and uh, well, uh, it, it, agreed to? Well, a candidate may say that in order to gain advantage, there's nothing wrong. It's a contest, a very intense contest among candidates. So, all sorts of things are possible. There are candidates who, for example, say that they have been asked to go and that the leadership of the party were the people that said they should go and run for elections. There are candidates who say that um, it is a community. There are candidates who they, the, the various reasons are provided by different aspirants in order to enhance their acceptability. Our position, however, in this particular case, we are saying no. If we are going to have a consensus candidate in Akoko, it must be, first of all, a decision agreed upon by aspirants and by the people. In this particular case, it was not even the four Akokos that were involved, at least what we are talking about, what the people were considered the authentic Akoko elders were not all in this meeting. And we want a united Akoko front in order to uh, Enhance. Let me add so will Akoko pick a consensus candidate? It may or it may not, but I believe that the Akoko elders are working on that issue presently. But I want to add something to this issue of zoning. People who say that there's no zoning, there's no zoning, they cannot be serious with regard to Ondo State. You must appreciate something. In Ondo State, the, the, the senatorial zone that will, that will produce the next governor always produces the deputy governor in every election. The senatorial zone that is expected to produce the next governor always characteristically produce the deputy governor. If we take it from even Ajashi, the deputy came from Ekiti. Ekiti produced the next governor. If we take it from Adebayo Adef Farati, the deputy came from South Senatorial. The South Senatorial produced Agago from the South. If we take it from Mimiku, the deputy came from, if we take it from Agagu, the deputy came from the center, and the center produced the governor in Mimiku. If we now come to Mimiku, the, the deputy came from the north, north senatorial. And so it is expected, it is, it is an unwritten law that every taxi driver, every Okada driver, every woman, every man, every uh, ordinary people in you know, those states, no, if you go to them, they will tell you the governor is coming from the north. So even if APC excludes it from its own constitution, it is written as an organic principle in the minds of the people of Ondo State. And so your party's position apparently doesn't go down well with you. No, I'm not saying for me, well, but it's not contradictory. There's no contradiction between my party's position and that principle. I have told you. No, you look at not your party's things. position and what you believe. No. Your party's position and your conviction. That's what no, I'm saying. My conviction. Your, 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 your party's position doesn't go down well with you apparently. Your I'll, party has dropped zoning and it's bit to picking its flag bearer, but your body language and everything that you have said now is for zoning. But the party's position cannot contradict the party's law. If we look at section 20 of the constitution of APC. So you're speaking to your party now to reconsider its position. It, but why, by the way, do you think your party has so, dropped zoning? No, my point is that the word the zoning may not be there. For example, the word zone is not in the constitution. But I'm saying to you, the party cannot contradict its own law. Its own law. But it has contradicted its own it. law. It says the, the zone means you don't Your have party reference. chairman, Chief Isaac Skekemeke, came yes. out on national television to say that the party has dropped zoning. Yes, I have Are explained you creating that. your own reality about what he said? Are you interpreting what he said to the mean chairman, what it suits you? The chairman, the deputy chairman, South. Governor Oni said the same thing. All I'm saying to you, what it means is that you cannot exclude anybody who is qualified 
from participating or competing. But that does not stop the party from having a preference. And preference may be by way of zoning. After all, you still have to screen. But how do you and reconcile this with your party's decision to drop zoning? The way to reconcile it is that the party will not stop anybody from contesting as long as it meets the qualifications for contest. You will not, for example, say that, oh, if from, from the south, you cannot contest. Or from the center, you cannot contest. But the party can say, yes, you can contest. And we have a preference for the north because we want to win. So, while you are talking of so, 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 do you, by the way, think that uh, different different your, your party has made character. up its mind who it wants to pick as its uh, flag bearer in this election, but it's keeping it close to its chest? Every party. There's no political party. Political context is about winning. And if the party wants to win, it will look at it. Look, during the contest for the presidents that was involved in who to support. For example, we the Yoruba people had to decide among the contestants from the north who to contest. I remember I told Ashiwaju personally that when it comes to winnability, there is no substitute for Muhammad Buhari. And I was very firm in that position. There were other people who, who disagreed with me, with me. And I gave my reasons. There are three issues. That, that conjure emotion in Nigeria, security, integrity of leaders in terms of corruption, as well as, um, you know, there's another one, security in an economy. In at least two of those ones, Buhari towered above everybody else in terms of his capacity to make us secure and in terms of integrity. And I say that when it comes to winnability, there's no substitute for him. So, so when it comes to winnability, yes. the most competent candidates in your own view now are the because aspirants who should, should come, come from, from Akoko, Akoko yes. North. Yes. Or, or the from, North. Yes, strategically. Because if you already have four... So what, what happens, then already what happens uh, uh, when the APC hold its primaries and uh, a, a candidate from the South emerges its, uh, candidate, uh, its flag bearer? If... The what Apple. happens? Well, naturally, we will support if it manages through the... From the south? Yes. And if, if it manages through the due process... I due mean, process yes, in a we, transparent and uh, democratic yes, uh, our election? Are our cocoa people are law-abiding people. All right. Making progress now. I, I envisage or I imagine that um, if a party is going to pick its... Um, flag bearer, the Ondo APC now for instance will pick its flag bearer, will, will pick a candidate who has excelled in its, his or her hitherto field prior to um, the governorship election. And uh, speaking of which, there are reports that um, uh, you didn't particularly handle the um, election petition uh, uh, cases in favor of the APC now, you didn't particularly handle them well. Um, in the 2015 elections. Well, so so well, will this work in your favor or against you in the party's, um, well, consideration in picking its uh, candidate? Well, I handled the election petitions in 2007 election. And then um, I also handled uh, uh, the election petition in this last election. I do not know when somebody says you do not handle it well. I do not know what exactly. Is it in terms of procedural presentation? Is it in terms of articulation? Is it in terms of knowledge of law? Or in, in terms, terms of, of outcomes? Winning? The outcome. There are lots of, every, every case that was presented before that court was nearly lost. I won one. I'm better than most lawyers. <laughs> I won the case of the House of Assembly in my uh, local government. Uh, I won that. How many did you handle? I handled several, but how many did not How many lawyers? did you win? I won uh, one out of the many, but nearly every single lawyer lost everything. I'm saying at least I won one. I'm saying that, tell me one case that was won in that. But a good case. measure of not success one. if you if, is if you had won um, a good number of the several cases that you handled. But I'm saying to you that nobody won in that particular. A contest 
To the best of my knowledge, no single case was won, except perhaps one or two, and I'm definitely I'm one of the one or twos, you know. So, I mean, there can be lots of issues about elections, you know, courts are overwhelmed. There are lots of issues about elections. The best way to win election is not to win at the tribunal, it's for the people to stand up and do right to themselves and to their ideas. As long as our people are there and they expect that people can give them money by their interest, regardless of where you get the money, and then present also. But elections are not always a true measure or a true test of what went down, uh, or, or not a true test of the people's will most of some of the time. Well, it is. You may say it's not a, the truest test of people's will, but it is a true test of people's will. And so you know, the people. To a certain it. extent, to a certain extent, you know, I'm talking of now a fair and free election. In this nation, we are still to get to that point because the problem that destroys elections are usually the government in power and the abuse of money. You can see it in the last election. We were just lucky to be able to elect a man that the people of Nigeria believed in and had confidence in. All right, we want to thank you very much, Dr. Abayomi, for your thank time you and thoughts on fireworks today. Indeed, you have given us a further insight into happenings in Ondo State as far as the governorship election is concerned. That's how it's been on Fireworks Today. Why not join us again same time next week when we bring you another incisive edition. On behalf of the crew, I am Bukola Samuel Webimo. Bye for now.